Abraham announces him as son. You say, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying he was resting and trusting in some type of a religious affiliation. Just because he was a, uh, uh, just because his heritage was of the seed of Abraham and he was an ancestor of the seed of Abraham, he thought that legally binded him as far as being right with God and earned him a spot into heaven. Folks, I'm going to be honest with you. There's no religion in this world that can save you. Matter of fact, religion has sent more people to hell than anything else I can think of. People resting in religious reform. The church is full of those, is, is full of people just like that, Brother Mike. Jesus put it best whenever he gave the illustration in the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew when he said that when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, that he walked through dry places seeking rest, and when he finds none, he comes back to that house that he departed from, and when he goes in, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Basically, he found that house that was just empty. It was lacking Holy Spirit possession. He found it lacking Holy Spirit purging because it was something that had just been swept over and never been cleaned. He found it lacking Holy Spirit provision as far as this man had just fabricated a lifestyle. You see, there's people in our churches today that's trusting in some type of position that they're holding. You see, you can look the part. You can look the part. And you can have all the credentials and still be lost and die without Jesus Christ. I want to ask you something tonight, young folks. What are you trusting in? Who are you trusting in? Are you trusting in mom and dad? Maybe because uh, uh, your dad may be a deacon and your mom a Sunday school teacher. Maybe because you haven't missed one day of Sunday school since the day you were born. Mom and dads, let me ask you a question. What is it that you're trusting in tonight? Are you trusting in, on going to heaven because you may be serving in some position of this church? Or are you trusting in Jesus? Have you been saved? Do you know for sure that if you closed your eyes tonight in death, that you would spend eternity in heaven? You see, sin deceives us. Religion deceives us. And we can get comfortable in those things. But Jesus said this man was deceived by sin. He not only said he was a man that had been blinded by the deception of sin, but he also said that he was, a man, he was a man that was bound for the destiny of sinners. Now I want you to look with me there in verse 20. The Bible, or excuse me, in verse 22, the Bible said, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now watch this. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that, in thy, that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Jesus had two things to say about this sinner's destiny. Is that first of all, he wanted us to notice the soul's destruction. The soul's destruction. The Bible said there in verse 20, in verse 23, it said, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Plural. He was separated from the very grace of God. You see, I believe that was the very ultimate torment that's in hell tonight, my friend. People that are in hell tonight, and there is a whole lot of people that has left this world. Many of them died from a church pew and went straight to hell. And tonight they are suffering torments beyond our imagination. And I believe the most severe one is the fact they are eternally separated from God's grace. Matter of fact, this man cried out and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Probably the first time this man had ever prayed before in his life and it was too late. Listen, folks, don't wait till the day that you die and wind up in an, in an eternal hell to decide you need to pray. This man waited too long. He cried out for mercy, my friends, that was no longer available to him. God's grace had come to an end. God's, wrath, God's mercy had, took, had, had, let down its, had let down its barrier and allowed the flood water of God's wrath to fall in upon that man. And now he will forever spend an eternity in a place called hell. 
tormented for the very fact that there is no, that there is no hope for him. Because he passed up the only grace he could have ever had. He waited too late to pray, but he was not only separated from God's grace, but he was tormented in a flame. A lot of folks has got a misconception about hell this day and time. I was looking on the internet the other day, reading statistics by Billy Graham, and he made an astounding statistic, and he said that 85% of the people that walked into a church house on any given Sunday was lost. That's astronomical. But as I was reading those statistics, I was reading people's points of view on what they thought hell was. A lot of folks don't even believe in a, in a literal hell. Many folks believe, well, if there is a hell, if it's that hot, then I'll just burn up immediately. We see here in this text, Jesus made it plain that hell is not a fantasy. It's a real place where real people with real, with real bodies go that's never consumed and they are placed in a fire that's never quenched. When, when this man said that he was in torments, it just simply meant that he was in unimaginable pain. And it never ended. It was a place where this man cried out for just one drop of water that, that would cool the burning that was on his tongue. One, just one drop, he thought, and was begging for maybe to suffice his pain. All of no avail. All of no avail. Folks, hell is real tonight. Young people, hell's real tonight. You may think to yourself, well, I've got plenty of time, preacher. I've got plenty of time. Can I just say that, that time is no respecter of persons with no one. Time, I bet, slipped up on this man. Time took this man by surprise. You see, death come, and he went with it. Just like that old beggar that laid outside his gate. Probably the same people that toted his body off, toted him off. Death is no respecter of no one. And we're not guaranteed the next second of our life. Are you ready for that day? Hell is a real place. And there's real people that's there. He was not only tormented by the very fact that he was there, but he was tormented by the fact that his family was coming there. You see, people in hell tonight, church, is more concerned about people coming to hell than we are, I'm afraid. Matter of fact, they're more concerned about people dying and going to hell than people that's dying and going to hell is more concerned about it. This rich man cried out and he said, he said, I want you to send Lazarus back to my family that they may tell them so that they will not come to this awful place. What a testimony. A testimony from a life that's too late. It's too late. He not only saw the soul's destruction, but I want you to know secondly about, this, about the sinner's destiny is the soul's despair. Look with me, if you will, again in the Bible. The Bible said, it said in verse 23, In hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember... That, it, that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and Lazarus, and likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he's comforted, and thou art tormented. Now watch this. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. The soul's despair. I want you to notice a couple of things about his despair that I see here in this text. First of all, he had the despair because there was a remembrance of lost opportunity. There was a remembrance of lost opportunity. The Bible said in verse 25, it said, But Abraham said, he said, Son, remember. You know what I believe he began to remember, Pastor Gordon? I believe he began to remember every.